So today I have just gone back from my trip to Paris and London and while I was there I went ahead and picked up a couple of things that basically I could only get while I was there or it was a lot cheaper to get while I was there. So I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys what I got and just kind of talk about the really cool things that I saw while I was away. Also, if you guys didn't know that I went away, you can go ahead and kind of catch up on my trip by looking at the videos that I posted last week. Those were all vacation related videos. And you can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I talked a little bit about some of the things going on and on Instagram especially you can see photos of everywhere that I was and I did some daily collages of all the different things that I saw and yeah it was really cool and I liked sharing the things that went on with you guys. So let's get into what I actually got now. I'm going to start with things that I got in London because I feel like that's, first of all it's where I got my the majority of my beauty products and it's also where I feel like a lot of where you guys are from. So that's why I'm going to start with there because then you'll see like the products that I got. You guys can also get that whole thing. So I went to Superdrug and I'm just going to preface this with a little story. When I got to London, the first thing that I did was go in search of boots. Literally, the moment that I checked into my hotel, I looked for where the nearest boots was and it happened to be right next to my hotel. So. I picked up all my stuff, I threw it into my hotel room, and then I booked it to Boots. And if you guys follow me on Twitter, then you saw that Boots literally had nothing there. Like, I think it was just the Boots that I went into that it was just a smaller Boots store, but they had like nothing that was special, nothing that I couldn't have gotten at home. Just none of the brands that I really wanted to try out when um, I figured out that I was going to London. So yeah, the next day I had to, I decided that I had to go to Superdrug, which is the other place that I have always heard people talk about. And Superdrug was actually the place to be, I have to say. It's basically like a CVS meets an Ulta for those of you from the States like me. So they had some really good brands and they had tons of deals. Everything in the store makeup related was three for two. So whatever three products you bought, the cheapest out of the three would be free. I am obsessed with Tanya Burr and she always talks about the Rimmel Wake Me Up Foundation. You can't really find this anywhere in the States. So I decided that I had to go and get this and this was actually why I was so upset with Boots because Boots only had the foundation and not the concealer which is like half of what I was excited for. So I went ahead and picked up the Wake Me Up Foundation and I picked up the Wake Me Up Anti-Fatigue Concealer. So these are both kind of like the L'Oreal Lumi Foundation I believe, that's what I'm going to kind of equate it to. So it's basically a light foundation coverage um, with it says anti-fatigue effect and radiant glow. It has little shimmers in it. And then the concealer is basically the same thing. I'm assuming that this is like the Maybelline, Maybelline Lumi Concealer. And for the foundation, I got the shade Soft Beige, Soft Beige or shade 200. And then for the concealer, I got the shade 40 Soft Beige. So I got both Soft Beiges. Hopefully it matches me some point this summer. And then I also knew that Tanya Burr, who, like I said, I'm obsessed with, has her makeup collection, which is sold uh, it only at Superdrug, I believe, and also online somewhere. So I was really focused on getting her lip glosses, and unfortunately, the ones that I wanted were all sold out, and I was really bummed about it, but hopefully I'll get my hands on them one day soon. But I did go ahead and pick up Just Peachy. Uh, which is just like a pinky nude kind of lip gloss. I thought that it was a more nudey tone than I normally have and it would be really good for layering. I was deciding between this one and afternoon tea, but I went ahead and got this one. The last three things that I picked up at Superdrug are actually probably what I'm most excited for and that I already used. It's the only thing out of this whole haul, basically, except for one other thing that I can think of, that I've already used. And that's the Berry M nail polishes. So Berry M is a brand that's based in the UK and you can order it in the US, but I don't think that they're sold anywhere in the US, at least anywhere that I've seen. I picked up three nail polishes from their Jelly nail line and it's a Jelly High Shine Nail Paint. This one is Guava, or it's GNP15, which is Jelly Nail Paint 15, and it's just this beautiful aquamarine color, and I thought that it would be really pretty for the summertime, and this one was one that my mom actually picked out for me. 
Then I picked up shade 20, Rose Hip, which is just the prettiest pink color. And I have pinks similar to this by Essie. I'm thinking like Main Roselle and Fiji combined. But this just seemed a little bit more baby doll pink to me and I was feeling that it might be a little more opaque than those other polishes so I picked this one up too. And then the last one that I picked up is shade 21 Sugar Apple which reminds me very much of Essie Candy Apple and I actually have it on my nails right now. It's a baby blue meets a kind of apple-y light green color or a mint green color. And yeah, I really liked how this applied to my nails. You do from the sugar apple shade need three coats of this and then I put on a top coat but I'm really excited for this and I think it looks so pretty on my nails. The next place that I went to it was the place that was so hyped up and literally I think everyone in the UK shops here and that's because I heard that it was basically like the place to be for prices and things like that because if you guys know anything about like the US dollar or like the economy the pound is very expensive and the stuff in England, therefore, is very expensive. So I decided to go to Primark, um, and I went to the Oxford Street location, which is like basically the central big Primark that everyone goes to. And I honestly was so disappointed. It was almost, it wasn't like disappointment like boots because they didn't have anything. It was disappointment because it was like, it was crazy in there. It was like Forever 21 in New York City meets Black Friday meets there's a mob of teenage girls that just got off a school bus and are ready to spend their allowance. Like, it was really crazy. And the other thing is that the stuff in there didn't look like it was super great quality. And yeah, so I really only picked up two things from there and they were not like exciting clothing pieces at all. I got a pack of five socks because I thought I was gonna run out of socks during my trip. So I got the five pair of socks, cotton rich sizes, four to eight US, and it was a five pack for two dollars. This was like, or two pounds. This was on a checkout line, so I just grabbed it. I haven't even tried them out yet. And then the second thing that I got is basically socks as well, and this is the uh, 100 denier appearance microfiber tights. So, and I think I had heard Zoella talking about this before. And I got them in the size medium black. These really sucked, to be honest. Um, they, like, my toe, like, broke a hole in the foot part. Which, like, if you guys have ever worn tights, you know, that's so uncomfortable to have your, like, one toe sticking out. That's Or even if you've had that in socks. Like, that's just not what you want. And a good pair of tights or socks, I'm trying to do that, that. But they were only £2.50, so it wasn't that bad. And I did really need tights during my trip. Because I packed some dresses, and I didn't realize how cold it was going to be. So I definitely needed those tights. So that's what I got from Primark. Not exciting. Like I said, I was really disappointed because it was too crazy for me to really shop, especially since I was with my family and they're not quite the shopper that I am. I'm a little more adventurous, so I could probably handle that. But with other people, it's just not the kind of atmosphere that I really was expecting or really wanted. I went into River Island on Oxford Street. I'm showing you an empty bag because the clothes are laying out. Um, they have a really seductive girl on the bag, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so I had heard a little bit about, about River Island and I decided to stop in and check it out. And my thoughts on River Island is that it's basically like almost an anthropology or a Urban Outfitters meets American Apparel. They have really cute high-waisted jeans in there that are super stretchy, just like American Apparel. They have a lot of crop tops, a lot of trendier pieces, but then they also had like a softer side to it. So it wouldn't be quite anthropology, but that's the closest thing that I could equate it to. I tried on tons of stuff in River Island, but I settled for just two outfit pieces because I didn't want to go ahead and spend all of my money on one shopping trip, or at least my mom kind of stopped me. I would have bought like the whole store because it was so cute. The first thing that I picked up was this peplumy style top. I really liked this. I was drawn to it immediately because of the floral print, which is so big, and I really don't have anything that's florally printed in my closet. So I picked this up because it's a nice kind of silky material, and the colors on it are just so beautiful. And I do like that it has a semi-peplum cut to it because it's not a drastic peplum, but it still gives you that nice kind of ladylike shape that peplums give. 
And it has some really nice lace decal right on the shoulders, and then on the back it has a lace panel up top, as well as an exposed zipper. The next thing that I got from River Island was something that I was drawn to, but that was also kind of a necessity for me to pick up because I didn't bring a jacket with me when I went to Paris and London, and that was a total mistake because I really overestimated the weather there. So. I had to pick up some sort of jacket to just keep me warm basically and I found this kind of it's like a wool jacket meets a blazer and it's just this navy blazer top you can see it on my Instagram I wore it one day um, it's a photo where I'm drinking bubble tea if you guys want to check that out but yeah it's just it has a blazer cut in the front hopefully it's showing you that and it's just kind of like a nice knit material and I really liked um, the paneling of the front, how it just has this kind of nice cut, and then the arms were perfect on me. I did want to go ahead and pick up one nice kind of statement jewelry piece there, and they had a ton that were really expensive, but because of the British conversion rate, I wanted to get something that would basically be like what I could get at Forever 21. I picked out a piece that was £8, and I'm really excited for it. It's just this statement necklace, it's more of a dainty one, and it has little gems on it and then spikes, and then in between the spikes are little red roses. So I really think that this is just so cute, and it'll just be nice with a couple different like daintier tops, and this will just kind of give it a little more flair, I think. And I like that it has a pop of red, because I don't have that in my statement necklaces that I already have. The last thing that I'm going to show you guys that I got in London is probably a weird thing to you guys, but I have actually decided to start collecting mugs because I was collecting shot glasses for a while, but I really found no purpose for them in my life. So I decided that I wanted to start collecting mugs, so I actually picked up my London mug from Starbucks because I wasn't seeing any mugs from like souvenir shops that I really liked. So I went ahead and just picked up one at Starbucks because I figured it was a reliable mug, it was a good quality mug, and there's paper stuffing stuff on the inside. So the mug that I picked out is just the London edition mug that they have, and I was kind of disappointed that they didn't have one that was engraved. Instead, they have one that's like printed on it, but I like it just as much, and I'm really excited for this. It's like a huge, I love Starbucks mugs because they're so big, but it just has the Big Ben on it. It says London, and then you have the London Bridge in the back, which is where my hotel was located by, and then you also have um, a shot of Parliament on the water on the back side. So I really like that, and this was a really great start to my mug collection, I think. I guess to start off Paris then, I'll follow that with the mug that I got in Paris. And this one I did actually pick up from a souvenir shop. I saw the Starbucks engraved kind of mug for Paris, but I didn't want another Starbucks mug because I'm not collecting just Starbucks mugs, I'm collecting like mugs in general. So I went for one that I thought was a little more girly and feminine and kind of cuter than just getting a Starbucks mug. And it's this little one from just a souvenir shop, like I said. It was located by a modern art museum, if that helps you guys. Um, yeah. So it has a picture of Notre Dame, or, uh, the Arc de Triomphe, something that I didn't see, the Eiffel Tower, of course, Moulin Rouge, uh, the Sacre Coeur, that was a church, I can't pronounce it, and then the Opera Garnier. So this was a really cute one. It has so many colors I love on it. It's just like blue, pink, green, and red on it all over. So I thought that this was a much cuter mug compared to the Starbucks one, so I picked this up as a little memorabilia thing from Paris. I just want to add that I did pick up some gifts for people while I was there, but I'm just not going to haul that to you guys because they're not for me, so they're for other people. Plus, if any of those people are watching this video, which some of them might be, I don't want to spoil the surprise for them. These next two things are something that as soon as my mom told me that we were going to Paris, because Paris has been a dream of mine for like three years, I knew that I was going to go and pick up this product. And if you guys are beauty obsessed people like me and you follow like tons of people on YouTube, you have probably lost it after this super simple but super talked about and hyped up product. And I kind of wish that I had picked up more of it. And that is, you guys are going to laugh, Bioderma. So I went ahead and picked up four bottles of Bioderma 
And this is basically a makeup removing solution or a cleanser of some sort. And I kind of wish I had picked up like four more bottles of this because I don't plan on going back to Paris anytime soon. But yeah, these things are like $35 on Amazon for one bottle. And for all of these, I think I got it for 40 euros. So that's such a steal. I picked up one set of the normal and one set of the sensitive just to try them out and see which one I like more. It's a pink cap, obviously. And yeah, so two of these were $18, 18 euros and 90 cents. So I picked up tons of bioderma. I have saved the biggest purchase for last. And I wasn't even thinking that I was going to get this when I went abroad. I really have wanted a designer bag for a long time and I'm not someone that's going to drop like a thousand dollars or even like two hundred dollars on a bag. That's like too much for me at this point in my life. Uh, but I did want to pick up something and so my friend had kind of told me that this might be cheaper there and it actually was a lot cheaper if you bought it in Paris because that's where the brand was founded and where they kind of create the stuff. So I went into a Longchamp store and yeah, I'm going to bring out the bag for you guys. I saved this bag because I just thought it was so like pretty and clean and it was just like when they handed it to me, I was like, I love you. I love you fancy bag from a store where they wrap up the bag for you but yeah so long chomp let's get into what i got they wrapped up my bag in tissue paper for me because like i said i went into one of their like storefronts rather than like another store that sells their stuff so it was a really nice kind of process of buying the bag that you're spending the money on and i didn't want to just get the pliage bag that everyone has because I find that that one's a little too fragile for me and um, yeah it's just like too common so I don't really know the name of this bag exactly I'm like trying to figure it out but it doesn't say it on here because the person removed the tags but this is the Longchamp bag that I got so I got the bag that's a step up from the regular pliage bag and the way that you can tell that is that this one has the black flap and this is actually a new model of it that just came out two weeks ago according to the salesperson that worked with me and yeah so it has a black flap here and then I got the large size and it's just the black fabric and a black handle this is different from the normal pliage bag like I was saying because it has the black flap the normal one has a brown flap which I don't like as much and I believe the handles are brown too the other difference is that I believe that this one's just overall sturdier and yeah this wasn't the bag that I originally thought that I was going to get because when I had researched Longchamp bags about half a year ago when I really wanted one they had one with a smooth leather flap and this one actually has kind of a grained leather flap but they discontinued those two weeks ago and they replaced them with this so I'm happy with this one but I did really like the smoother leather better I think that, that one just looks a little bit classier but I'm still super happy with this one and yeah so this was my biggest purchase of my trip I'm so happy with it so that is it for this video. I hope that you guys liked what I bought while I was in Paris. And don't forget that if you want to check out anything that went on during my trip, just go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Just scroll through what I've been posting and you guys will definitely see it. So I hope that you guys liked this video. And if you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. You comment down below whatever you're thinking. And you go ahead and subscribe to my channel to follow up with me for the rest of my summer series. Because I have like... 40 something more videos to post during my summer. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!